Okay, so we have looked at examples where we're adding and subtracting. We are now going to look at multiplying and dividing. So looking at multiplying first, uh, let's do a little recap. Um, if we were just dealing with numbers, one third times two fifths, uh, if we remember, what do we do when it's just numerical fractions when we're multiplying? Um, and the answer is you just multiply along the top and multiply along the bottom. Multiplying fractions is one of the easiest operations to do with fractions. So it's just 1 times 2 on the top, which is 2, 3 times 5 along the bottom, which is 15. And 2 over 15 is the answer. So now we're going to look to do that with our algebraic fractions. But like before, we're still going to do the process of factorizing, looking to factorize, looking to cancel, then do the operation and then look to factorize and cancel again. OK, so let's try the following example. 3x squared minus 27 over 4x squared minus 15x plus 9 multiplied by 4x minus 3 over x squared plus 3x. OK, so this looks very complicated, but remember with our algebraic fractions, we are first always going to look to factorize anything we can factorize. Then we're going to look to cancel anything we can cancel before we actually do the operation, before we do the multiplication. And then at the end, we we'll look to factorize and cancel again. OK, so let's take a look at the first. We are going to look at the very first numerator which is 3x squared minus 27 and we're going to look to factorize it. So what's common here is uh, 3 so we'll pull it out and to get 3x squared back again you'd need to multiply by an x squared and then a minus 9 and if you spot x squared minus 9 is actually the difference of two squares. So we're going to further factorize this open up the two brackets, and for the difference of two squares, we're going to get x by x, and to get a 9, of course, 3 by 3. And the difference of two squares, we're going to have a plus in one bracket and a minus in the other. All right, so that is the numerator on the left-hand side factorized. Now let's look at the denominator on the left-hand side, and of course we have 4x squared minus 15x plus 9, which is a quadratic trinomial. So we're going to do a four-step method here. First number by last number, which is 4 times 9, which is 36. And now we're going to look for factors of 36 to make a minus 15, to add or subtract to make a minus 15. So factors of 36 would be 6 times 6. That won't work to make minus 15. Um, or 12 times 3. OK, 12 and 3 would work. Let's see if we can get the signs right. In order to make a minus 15, of course, it would have to be minus 12 and minus 3. So let's check that this works. Will these two multiply to make 36? A minus 12 by a minus 3 would make a plus 36, that's correct, and add together to make a minus 15. Yes, they would. Okay, so we can move ahead then to rewriting out the quadratic, and of course, instead of the middle term minus 15x, we're going to write it as minus 12x minus 3x plus 9. Okay, so Looking at 4x squared minus 12x, what's common to both is, of course, 4x. And we need to multiply by an x minus 3. And then common to 3x and 9 is a 3. And, of course, we want these brackets to be the same. So let's check. We can get a sign here that works. To get a minus 3x, that would have to be minus. And double check minus 3 by minus 3 is a plus 9. And it is. So we have 4x minus 3 in one bracket and x minus 3 in the other. OK, so that's the denominator on the left hand side. So now we have 4x minus 3 as the numerator here. Well, there's nothing more we can do with that. We can't get a common term. It's not any of the other types. So that will be left as it is. And then the last bit is x squared plus 3x. And that we will be able to um, factorize x squared plus 3x, if we pull out the common term x, we'd get x by x plus 3. Okay, so now we've factorized everything we can factorize, let's now put them back and we can then look to cancel if we can. So instead of the 3x squared minus 27, we're now going to put its factorized version, 3 brackets x plus 3 by x minus 3 all over. 
instead of 4x squared minus 15x plus 9, we're going to put its factorized version, uh, and we have 4x minus 3 in one bracket there, and x minus 3 in the other. Multiply, and of course, we didn't uh, factorize the 4x minus 3, we couldn't, uh, but the denominator here, we were able to factorize x by x plus 3. Now, what we can do here, of course, just looking at this fraction on its own, is we can cancel the x minus 3 on the top with the x minus 3 on the bottom, because x minus 3 on the top is being multiplied to everything on the top, and the x minus 3 on the bottom has been multiplied to everything on the bottom. Okay, so that helps us out somewhat, and we're left with this. And of course, now we're going to multiply. And when you multiply, you're going to multiply along the top and you're going to multiply along the bottom. Now, all I'm going to do is put them together in brackets to indicate the multiplication because I don't really want to multiply out the terms because if I can cancel again, I would be looking to factorize and then to cancel. So I don't want to multiply it out to then have to go and factorize it again. So leave it like this because this is in its factorized version. And I can cancel again now when I have them here like this because the 4x minus 3 on the top here has been multiplied to everything else on the top. And the 4x minus 3 on the bottom has been multiplied to everything else on the bottom. As is the x plus 3 and the x plus 3. So all I'm actually left with is 3 on the top over x, and that is my answer. Okay, so let's have a look at the division of algebraic fractions. So, um, recap first of all on how to divide numerical fractions. So let's say you had uh, 3 fifths divide by a third. So if you remember with numerical fractions, when we are dividing, the process is to flip the second fraction and change to times. So it becomes 3 fifths, we flip the second fraction, so flip it upside down, so instead of 1 over 3, it's 3 over 1, and we change the division to times. That is how we always have dealt with division of fractions in the past. So we end up then doing the multiplication. So we're multiplying these fractions together now. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply along the top and multiply along the bottom. So we get three times three is nine on the top and five times one is five on the bottom. So that is the answer to that division. So now looking at some algebraic division, uh, when we have fractions, of course, let's take the following example. Let's say you have 2 over 2x minus 1 divided by 4 over 4x squared minus 1. Okay, so as we've said before, we are going to look to factorize anything we can factorize. So um, there's nothing I can do with the 2. There's nothing I can do with the 2x minus 1. And then divide, and of course 4. Uh, nothing I can do with 4, but 4x squared minus 1 is, of course, if you spot it, the difference of two squares. So, it would be 2x by 2x and 1 by 1, and of course a plus in one bracket and minus in the other. Okay, so now you'd look to cancel. There's nothing I can cancel here, there's nothing I can cancel here, so I'm now going to look to do the operation. So in order to do the division, we are of course going to flip the second fraction and change this to times. So it's going to be 2 over 2x minus 1 and when we flip the second fraction we're going to get 2x plus 1 by 2x minus 1 over 4. So now now it's multiplication, so we're going to multiply along the top and multiply along the bottom. And remember what I said, we're going to keep it in factorized form. We're not...
we're going to keep it in factorized form. We're not going to multiply out anything because we want it in factorized form to see if we can further cancel. So multiplying along the top, we'd end up with 2 times 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. And on the bottom, we're going to end up two, with 2x minus 1 times 4. So now we can see quite clearly, because we haven't multiplied out the brackets, that we can cancel the 2x minus 1 with the 2x minus 1 on top. So I'm left with 2 times 2x plus 1 over 4. And if you spot here, of course, we can further simplify 2 over 4 as a fraction can be simplified uh, to a half. Or another way of looking at this, uh, this would be 2 goes into 4 twice. So we're left with 2x plus 1 on the bottom all over 2. So that is the final simplified answer. Okay, let's just consider this tricky question where we're asked to simplify this kind of a fraction, uh, where we have a fraction within the fraction, if you like. Um, key thing to remember here is, I'm going to do another little recap. Uh, bear in mind, let's say you have just a simple numerical fraction. Say you have three-fifths. If you remember, we can do anything to the top of this fraction and to keep it equivalent as long as we do the same thing to the bottom of the fraction then we'll get another fraction that is the very same as three-fifths so in other words let's say I decide to multiply the top by 10 then I'd get 30 3 times 10 is 30 if I do the very same thing to the bottom I will get 5 times 10 is 50 in other words you're timesing 10 to the top and the bottom then 30 over 50 is the very same as three-fifths. They are equivalent fractions. So again, if I take three-fifths and I multiply by something else, doesn't matter what, um, let's say I multiply by six, this time three times six is 18, then as long as I multiply by six on the bottom, I will still get an equivalent fraction. 18 over 30 is also the same as 30 over 50 and the same as three-fifths. Okay, so I need you to be aware of that idea when we deal with this tricky question, okay? Because if you have a, a denominator of 4 here, you have a denominator of 2 here, it all looks very nasty that you've got fractions within fractions. If you remember the idea that as long as I multiply the top, by the same thing that I multiply the bottom, I'm going to be left with something that is equivalent to this. So what I'm going to look to do is I'm going to look to multiply everything on the top by 4. And if I multiply everything on the top by 4, and I do the very same to the bottom, then what I'm going to end up with is with an equivalent fraction, but a much more simplified fraction. Okay, so we're going to multiply everything on the top by 4. That means I'm going to multiply the y by 4 and the quarter by 4. So I'm going to multiply this by 4 and this by 4. Of course, if I multiply everything on the top by 4, I've got to multiply everything on the bottom by 4 as well. Once I'm doing every, the same thing to the top and the bottom, I'm getting an equivalent fraction. So I multiply everything on the top by 4 and everything on the bottom by 4. Now the reason I picked 4, of course, was so that when I multiply by 4 here and then divide by 4, that, of course, is going to cancel. So what I'm then left with is 4 times y on the top plus that has cancelled with the divide by 4 to leave just 1 there all over and 4 times a half of course is actually two so there is your answer your simplified fraction